In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Nexta theme for WordPress and specifically some of the key features that help separate this from standard WordPress themes, mainly the ability to be able to use the companion plugin to do away with quite a few other WordPress plugins. Having everything contained inside the one platform ultimately could lead to speed improvements. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. But before we do, I will say this is a sponsored video, but as always, I'm not going to express any opinions. I will demonstrate some of the features so you can make a more informed decision for yourself. And stick around to the end because I'm going to give you information on a lifetime deal that if you are interested in jumping onto Nexta, maybe save you a good few dollars. Now, when you download and install the Nexta theme, you're going to get prompted to install the Nexta extensions. And if you grab the lifetime deal I'm going to talk about at the end of this video, you'll also have access to the Pro extensions, which opens up more options. The same thing goes for the Nexta Blocks and Nexta Blocks Pro, a collection of additional blocks to use inside Gutenberg. But you can easily use the Nexta theme with Elementor should you want to. And there's hundreds of templates for both Gutenberg and Elementor, both full website templates and individual sections. So let's Let's take a look at some of the options and why this sets itself apart from many other themes out there. First up, let's jump into the Nexta extension because I think this is where some of the real power of the Nexta theme actually comes in. If we hop over into there, you'll see we've got our dashboard. And inside of a dashboard, we've got several different sections. You've got your theme builder, which we'll take a look at in a moment. But if you're used to using a theme builder inside something like Elementor, this is going to be very familiar to you. Your code snippets, as its name would suggest, gives you the ability to add in code snippets without the need for another plugin to handle it. As you can see, this is activated by default, and we can click and take a look at the different settings. And we can also just jump in and take a look at all the different options that are available. You can see there's already a selection of different code snippets pre-installed and not activated and if we go and take a look at one of these you'll see it's a very typical code snippets type plugin we've got the option to give it a name we can choose what kind of code snippet it is from php html css javascript then choose whether you want automatic placement or inserted via a short code and where you want this to run and as you can see it's quite a comprehensive set of options we've got site-wide specific pages and posts e-commerce specific etc so we can get quite granularly here on how we do it and you can also schedule this to start and end at a particular particular day. So that's pretty interesting. Next, if you jump into the utility section, this is where you'll find a lot of the various different options that allow you to customize WordPress itself. So if you were used to using a plugin like ASE or admin site enhancements or any of those kinds of tools, this is going to be very familiar to you. You can easily enable and disable various different features inside you from things like Adobe fonts and custom font uploads to actually having an SMTP email setup duplicate posts. So little things you may either use sort of like individual plugins or code snippets or a tool like ASE, you can do that inside you. There's also things like a rollback manager, which allows you to easily roll back to previous versions of plugins and themes and things like that. So if you find you download and install an update and something goes a little bit wrong, you can use this to roll back. I've covered tools like this on the channel previously. They're quite a useful way of having that sort of ability to roll back should you need to. Then you've got your performance option. Inside here, you can customize various different aspects to optimize your website. So things like advanced performance, if we go and take a look, you can see we can enable and disable various features. Some of these are useful for security purposes as well. Other ones will just ultimately speed up your website. So you can do things like disable the emoji script, dash icons, and so on. Again, very common things that you used to see in, in additional plugins, and they're all included inside here, including things like defer CSS and JavaScript, remove moving things like short links, the RSS feed and so on, things that you just may not want to have as part of a site, especially if it's a business site. You don't really need things like RSS feeds. You can get rid of them all done inside you. And again, not having to install another plugin, having it all inside you can be very, very useful. Then we've got our security section. So again, we now have more options to secure this. Again, if you're using a security plugin or using something like ASE, a lot of these options are going to be very familiar to you. So if we go into things like advanced security, again, you see we've got a series of different options inside you. Things that in general, you can disable and ultimately make your site just a little bit more secure. So things like XML, RPC, the REST API, if you're not using that, Meta Generator, and so on. You can disable all those different options should you want to. 
Then we've got the admin interface. So if you want to customize this, if you're handing it off to a client, for example, you may want to disable various different parts of the admin section for, you know, you don't want your client to actually go in and start messing things up, or you just want to make things just a little bit simpler, or just things that they just don't need to see. You can easily come in and enable and disable these features. So all you need to do, for example, switch it on, click the cog icon, and then make any of the customization options that you want. So when you go to annoy and nag screens at the beginning, when you log into the pretty unimaginative WordPress dashboard, you can just disable all these different things. So disable that, disable the site health, disable at a glance, remove the welcome panel, admin notices, etc., etc. Hit save and taken care of. Pretty simple. Then you've got your extra options, and this is where you can do a few other things. So we can control the rollback plugin, so you can customize this, so we can roll back various different things. So in this case, the next extension. You can white label this. If you are handing this off to a client and you don't want to see any of the next branding, you can come in here and you can set up your own custom branding, set all the different things up, set your logos, things, all your clients' logos, all can be done inside here. Again, these are things that in general will require maybe additional plugins to do some of these things. So the fact it's all integrated into the next extensions is pretty useful. Then you've got your theme customizer. And what this will basically do is open up the standard WordPress customizer and allow you to make those changes. So for example, you come into things like your global typography, that will take you into the WordPress customizer and all those options are inside here. So you can jump in and start customizing. So again, all pretty simple, straightforward. If you use this on multiple sites and you have a standard setup, you can use the import and export option and you can import and export your customizer and your extension settings. So that's fundamentally what you have inside the next extension. So like I say, this ultimately could help you replace something like ASE or an equivalent plugin. It's all done inside you. Jump into the theme builder. Like I said, if you are used to working with a tool like Elementor or Bricks or anything like that, where you create different templates for different parts of your site and apply conditions, this is basically the same thing. As you can see across the top, we've got these tab sections that allow us to see the various different theme components from sections to headers, footers, and so on. I've already created one, so let's go and take a look at this. If we edit it, you can see this is a basic global header, so we can insert directly inside here. So we can build this out ourselves using any of the next blocks. So you can customize this, build it from scratch, whatever you want to do. We'll come back to those blocks in a moment. Or ultimately, you could make things easy, import a template, choose that from the web kit, and then you can download, use those, customize them, tweak them to whatever you kind of want. Again, we'll come back to the templates in a moment. Once you've built everything the way that you want, you then have conditions for choosing exactly where and when this will be displayed. So if we click on this, you can see I've set this to the entire website, but let's just remove that. And you can see we can set things up for the entire website, for singular archives, singular pages, front page, and so on. So you could use this to customize where and when this will actually be displayed. And you can even break things down to show this for particular days of the week, operating system, browser, and so on. So you may have advertising sets sections that are specific at a certain time, or you may have different messages for where people are coming in from external campaigns, for example. This allows you to include information here and choose where and when these different sort of theme pieces or template blocks will actually be displayed. We'll pop this back to the entire website. Then underneath, you've got your exclude from. So it basically does the reverse. You can click, click on there and you see all the same options are there, but you can choose what you want to exclude it from. So you may say the entire website, except for maybe the 404 page, where well, you could easily come in here. We'll do a search for the 404. There we go. Choose that. So now this will show on the entire website, except for our 404 page, which we may want to have just really simple page. Hit save and you are done. So that basically ticks off what you can do with the next extension. Let's move on now to the next blocks, which, like I say, open up additional blocks that we can use inside Gutenberg. So we come into the next block section and into our dashboard. You'll see, again, we've got some options down the left-hand side. So let's take a look at the blocks. And this is where we can see all the different kinds of blocks that we have. So you've got all, free, freemium, and pro. You can see at a glance, we can filter these down. So we want tabbed, for example. There's all the tabbed options, the essentials. And you can enable or disable any or all of these different options. If you want a live demo, you can simply come over to the live demo, click on it, and you'll see what this looks like. So we can view our demo. There we go. There's various different demos we can easily look through. If you want to learn how to use it, you can click the Read the Docs. 
That will then take you over to the documentation and show you how to use that particular function. Now, if we take a brief look through here, you'll see there's an awful lot of options. So if you don't want to have access to all these, there's certain things inside you you just don't use, just go and disable them. And things are broken down into things like your creative, your tabbed, and so on. And at the bottom, you've got your W Design Kit, which I've covered in a previous video. So if you want to check that out, I'll link that in the details down below. But anything you have available inside W Design Kit will also be available here. So you can download that and install that and then start using it. Your WordPress templates, as his name would suggest, this is where we can see the different templates. Again, we'll come back to those templates in a moment. We also have extra options inside here as well. So like we saw inside the next extensions, this opens up some more options to choose different things, apply performance settings and tweaks and so on. So again, maybe this will do away with additional tools that you use to tweak the performance of your overall website. So we come into settings. Again, you can see same kind of options inside you. We've got things like connecting the Google Maps API, disable Google fonts, which in general, you're probably going to want to do. Enable next to global CSS, etc. So there's a lot of different options here. Some things allow you to connect up to external services like Google Recapture and so on. Jumping into the performance, you can see we've got the asset manager, so we can choose how we want this to be optimized. And then you've got things like your delay third party JS and defer your CSS and JavaScript. Again, if you're using things like auto optimize and stuff like that, additional plugins, these are the kinds of options that you have inside there to defer and speed up the overall loading process. Come into your custom CSS and JS. We can add custom code directly inside you. Again, your rollback plugins here, but this is for the next of blocks. If we come into the white label, again, we can white label the blocks functionality. There's our theme builder. And as you can see, we've got various different components for the 404 page, the single page templates, and so on. If we jump into the pattern section, if you create any patterns, they'll be listed inside here as well. So let's just jump into a page now and take a look at some of the options that we've got for these additional blocks as part of the next of blocks. You can see I've got a page already loaded in. This is one of the templates. And as you can see, it's all set up for me. If we take a look on the left hand side and click, you can see there's our next of blocks. And as you can see, there's quite a lot. And I didn't enable everything. So if you want to enable or disable any of these, we've seen how easy it is to do that. And you'll also notice that we've got in some instances, two variations of the same type of block. So for example, you've got your heading block and your advanced heading block. They will give you more options for customizing things in the advanced heading block, whereas the heading is more basic. And you've also got things like draw SVG spaces. You've got your typical container to allow you to build things out in either a CSS grid or Flexbox model. Okay, let's take a look at the template options. Come to the top, we've got import templates, and this allows us to use the W Design Kit and see the various different templates we have access to. You can see on the left hand side, we can search, we can choose between the free and the pro options, we can choose between full pages and sections and page kits, and what plugin or plugins are being used. So we'll say next to blocks and next to blocks pro. So let's say we want to import a different page. Let's say we like the look of this one. You can simply come over, click to download it. That will go through the import process. Here we go, after a few moments, there's the page imported for us. So there you go, you can see just how easy it is to be able to download and install templates, whether they're full templates for the entire page or just section templates, the process is the same. So Nexta has a lot of interesting options, including, like I say, all the extensions, which effectively help you do away with additional plugins to do quite a few different things. Let's go and take a look now at the pricing side of things. It's on lifetime offer over on AppSumo. And there are three different tiers here, tier one, two, and three. The only difference between them are the number of sites you can install Nexta on. They all have exactly the same features, all of the same options. They all have the Nexta blocks extension and the theme. So if this is a deal you want to jump on, the link is in the description down below. Hopefully you found this video useful. It's opened up your eyes to some of the options that Nexta offers. And as always, I do welcome your feedback in the comments section. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats. And until next time, take care.